Hi, this is Adele, and in today's video, I'm going to show you and demonstrate step by step how to do two paintings that are related, but they both turn out to be total individual. So they work together, but they also work individually. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the like button below so you don't want to miss out on any of my Saturday morning art tutorials. And stay to the end so you can see both of them together. Thanks for joining. Now let's get started. There are two canvases that I'm going to do landscape, like abstract landscape on them. And so I want them, part of them to have a straight edge and, and part of them not. So I'm going to, I'm putting the tape to make sure I get some straight edge on it. And, um, then I'll going to pull it off and I, I put, get the straight edge and then I take off the, some of the straight edge. You're going to see that in uh, just a little while. And before I even start, uh, I like to have the background of these already having something on there. It makes it much more interesting to have several layers of colors, um, even if they disappear when I paint over them. But it's just a place to start that has that might catch some of the interesting texture and color combinations and layers. So uh, you can see on my paper palette, I have several different colors already put out there. Blues, several different blues, a black, white, and of course orange, which is the complement. And um, you can see uh, to the left, at the upper left, I have pa uh, uh, stacks of like restaurant trays that have collage pieces on it. So I've already laid out my, my, my work table. Now I'm putting the color on the top there, a lighter color. And I take off the tape while it's still wet just because I can tell um, what it looks like to make any more any more marks or anything else. Now I'm going at the bottom. I have that light color at the bottom already, but I don't like that. It's just, it, it feels like too much of the weight is at the top. So I want to make sure I put something that gives the weight more balance. So watch, you'll see, I'm going to put some black on it, which I always use black in all of my paintings. I don't know. I just think that having some solid black um, gives it some kind of strength. And the color combinations with the black just give it extra oomph. Already it's looking better. So now I'm, while the paint is still wet, I can, with a light underneath and a dark over, I can make marks on it and the light the, or whatever color you have underneath is going to come through. And I just love that. I do that with the black all the time. So it's not so stark. And I just kind of do this hieroglyphic writing. And so it gives it some texture. And please forgive the shaking of the camera because my studio, it's not really the camera, it's the studio. I have a really tiny studio and it's not super well built. So every time I walk around, there's shaking. So I apologize for that. You'll see it in all my videos. Now I'm trying to 
with the, the palette that I, I mean, the, um, yeah, the palette knife I love so much, I took a little bit off um, or smeared it around because I didn't want it stark. I put on things and take them off. Now I'm going to smear it or cover up some of the lines, not all of them. I'm going very lightly with the brush. And now removing the tape. That way I can see it better and decide what my next step's going to be. These pieces are 16 by 20. And I like to work in pairs when I'm doing this. I use the same colors on each in the beginning and do sort of the same composition and colors. But um, once you get to the middle, once I start getting farther along in the painting, I make marks that are different on each one so that they're each individual, but they relate as a pair or if you do more in a series. I knew before I started this that I wanted to do a mostly blue painting. That's why you see all the blue on the my paper palettes because I just had, you know, that's what I wanted. I have the white and the orange to complement and to get a variety of values of the blues, but I really wanted um I knew ahead of time I wanted that 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 color scheme. Now I'm using my palette knife to make a line, but a more organic line. So it, you don't see the starkness of the line of the, the top blue, blue strip that I did originally. And it always is a surprise what goes on and what, and what doesn't, so I love that. I do a lot of drawing and painting with that palette knife. Doing the same kind of thing on the other side, but again, with the organic... With the organic shape of it, of the line, you never know what it's going to do, so each one will be a little bit different. And you can, um, this is the restaurant trays that have the collage papers already, you know, a collection of them that I did beforehand. Um, and just a variety of blues, some neutrals. I knew I didn't want it to have any reds or, or you know, or, or yellows in it. So I just put stacked up um, the restaurant tray, which is a great idea if you um, have, have, don't know how to stack up your collage papers. This is a great idea. Now I'm going to put a, I'm using gloss gel, which is thicker than gloss medium, to attach this, um, this piece on there that I took off of my palette, my paper palette. I keep all my palettes. You can see at the top of the painting, you can see on the restaurant tray, I keep all my palettes and I might take a piece of it. You can um, take a, you can just peel them off the palette. Now there wasn't another one of those exactly like that. So this is where the two canvases will start to kind of take on their own personality. If you're familiar with any of my work or seen any of my videos, you'll know how much I love doing drawing with the China marker. So, um, and again, this is the next step in making each one of these its own unique piece, yet very, they're, they're totally related through color and composition.
Now I'm using this paper towel at the top to, it, the color's not totally dry, but I've left, um, it's not, I didn't just put it on. So it's given a little bit of time to um, be on the canvas. And when I wipe it off after a little bit, then some of it comes off and most of it stays on there, which is exactly what I want. I like to put things on and take things off. I rarely just put a color on there and not do anything over it. Just gives it more depth. And the color, uh, the blue at the top is not so opaque. Now I'm mixing a blue, holding it up to see, which is, I uh, thought it was way too light. It was too much, going to be too much contrast, so I wanted to add some blue and darken it up a little bit. Deciding whether you're going to do it light or dark or medium is really important because wherever it's, it's contrast, your eye's going to go there, so you have to decide, do I want it to go there or not go there? So I didn't want it to stand out that much, and that's why I made it a little bit darker. I love the drips on each of these uh, because it gives kind of a looseness and a vertical line. I like a variety of lines. You've got the organic line drawn with the china marker. You've got the drip. You've got the line at the top, right, um, the darker line across the top. And you'll see I do more farther in the video. Now I'm thinking it's time to add some of that pop of color, the compliment. And I love, again, drawing and line. It's a Q-tip this time, which gives a, a totally different style and, and line. I, and when I write, eat both with the Q-tip or even with the paintbrush or with the china marker, I have a tendency to, to twist it, not just draw it straight. I twist the... Um, the utensil so it gives an interesting and kind of loose uh, where I, you know mark where I don't feel like I'm controlling it now going back to the collage just holding up pieces to see where I like them where I don't like them if I want some of the color in if it's too stark if it's too dark I like this piece, but way too big. You can see it's a different kind of blue. So it's not, um, it just gives it more depth, depth by having that kind of blue. And when you have the collage pieces from all the, the paper pieces that you've done before or lots of different places, you can do text. I'm going to do another video where I have, um, show you how to collect collage pa papers, but with this one that I chose, it's because the blue is a little bit cooler than the other blues. So it gives a little bit of contrast. Now I'm looking to try to do one on the other side. Where to put it, holding it up, making it go all around. This one's a different kind of shape. It's a more triangular shape, which I really like to have the variety of shapes. So I like tearing the paper rather than just cutting it. You can see I'm holding it up, trying it, decided on a spot. And again, this is um, with gloss gel. I want to ask you to please comment below um, as you watch this and let me know if you 
liked what I'm doing, if you've, if I've used something that you've never used before, I love um, to know your process, if you've learned anything. So please comment. I read every single comment and, and um, respond to them personally as quickly as I can. I have um, white that I've made in fluid and put it in this um, squeeze bottle here and I again writing on the palette and many times I use my my um, saran wrap to to use it as a printer and then put it on but I didn't have any saran wrap so okay I'm just putting the paper palette right on there and I was expecting to have the writing kind of the writing come through, but it didn't come through. I was like, whoops, that did, that is not how I thought it was going to be, but I love the large organic shape that happened. So, okay, I'm going to go with it. Now I'm going to do something on the other side, same thing, but now I know it's not going to work just like I thought it would. So I'm very curious to see what kind of shape's going to happen. Okay, you can see how both these um, pieces are related. They're different, but they're great as a pair. So they can stand on their own or be bought together. I love this color, so I put it on the um, collage tray, but when I hold it up, I, you'll see, I just can't figure out where to put it. It just is too stark. So you, it's not like you have, um, use all the pieces that you put on your, on your collage tray. They're just ideas. Now I love text. I have lots of papers that have text on it, black and white text. It gives a wonderful pattern. And so I use that a lot in my paintings. decided to put it at the bottom to bring your eye down there to have the contrast. Now let's see on the other side. When I held it up and put it over that one piece of collage, it just, uh, my whole body just went, yes, that's it. And that's what you're really looking for. Now that I did that, I went back and was like, oh, I didn't like the way <laughs> where that one was. So I'm taking it off and putting it somewhere else. You can always change your mind. And I do that a lot. So I tear another piece. Let's see where that's going to go. Try it in different places, vertical, horizontal, um, down across the, into the black line at the bottom. And again, I'm pulling, making it, um, I like it at the bottom because you've got the black down there and I want to pull the eye down there with the contrast of the black and white and also the text, the pattern. That was that in this one I used um, the medium, which is much more fluid and liquid. You can see how it was falling off of the that piece of paper. So look how they each of these pieces have the same components, but they're put a, put together in a different way. I hardly ever work on one painting at a time. I always have several paintings going at the same time, but these are so small, so I really like to have um, several. 
Sometimes I work on four at a time. And because the black and white is so stark to me, I always kind of, I wanted to push it back. And by pushing it back, it's not quite so noticeable. So I go over it with a color that's similar to the a color next to it. And um, the black and white, uh, next to the black and white collage piece. And so you just don't notice it quite as much. You still notice it, but it's more subtle. So here are the final two that are related, but individual. And I put them in a frame so you could see how great they look once you put them in a frame. They each are individual, but they work together.